Hi everyone, good afternoon. This is the Aras Mataz here, coming to you once again with my unsolicited opinions on African sports. Um, yeah, uh, before I continue, I'd like to thank you for watching and I'd like to thank you for continuing to support me and uh, in, in our quest to help see African sports become better in terms of participation and investment and other ways as well. Thank you so much. Uh, for subscribing. Uh, please keep supporting by liking the video, sharing, and uh, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Yeah, uh, today I have a really, really special guest. Um, I'm very happy to be with in the, in the presence of uh, a top, top sports lawyer. And once again, I was very privileged to have him as my lecturer when I was doing my MBA in Spain. Um, uh, he'll tell us a bit more about himself, but I would like to brag a bit more before he does. Uh, he's represented top players like Neymar, Luis Suarez, and others who I'm sure he will mention uh, in the submission. So yeah, this is um, Juan, de Dios, Juan de Dios Crespo uh, of uh, Ruiz Huerta Crespo uh, Law Firm in Valencia. Am I right? Yes, you are. I mean, don't try to do it in Spanish because me are the same. Yeah. <laughs> Willem Alexander. Willem, is Willem or not? Yeah, Willem, Willem yeah. That's Willem. So don't try Spanish, but just it is Juan de Dios Crespo Perez. John of God in translation, John of God Crespo Perez of Ruiz Huerta Crespo Sports Lawyer. Yeah, uh -huh. it's me. Right, yeah, it's right. So yeah, um, so Juan, um, yeah, could you please uh, tell us a bit more about yourself and like some of the experience you've had uh, as as a top sports lawyer, the top sports lawyer that you are? Okay, uh, how, how long can I be here? A couple of days? Or... <laughs> well, as, lo as long as you need to be. <laughs> uh, it's a lot, a lot to say. Let's 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 start for, from the scratch. Uh, I was a, a student in law and playing also indoor soccer, so futsal. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was the only one who was studying law there. So the president of the federation said, why don't you just join us as a member of the board? I joined the board. It was 1981. Uh, then you join uh, us to be the, let's say, uh, the disciplinary uh, judge. And I joined the judge. Then I became a lawyer already and I, I started to work there. Okay. On a free basis, you know, just free basis. Nobody was thinking about being a sports lawyer at that time. I mean, it was so much difficult. You were a lawyer and then you might have cases of sports law. That could be the case, but never, nobody at that time had in mind to be a sports lawyer. And then me, starting step by step, I, I understood that there was a gap there. There was a, a hole, I can say more than a gap, a hole. And that you need to have people uh, specialize in sports law. Is this something like sports law? But well, this is a discussion that we can be here for, for, for years. Mm -hmm. uh, is sports and the law, is law and sports, is sports law? I think that is, there is sports law, of course, sports law exists. And sports law is all the regulation, all the studies that are quite different from the rest of the world. For instance, in football, in football, you have a breach of contract. Okay. How can you breach a contract? You, you, you breach a contract if you're a barman, if you're a gardener, if you're a lawyer, if you're mm -hmm. a doctor. Yeah, you end the, you end the contract. That's, yeah, you, you don't pay for ending the contract. In football, you pay. In basketball, you pay. You mm -hmm. have a contract, you pay. This is a difference between the uh, employees and employer relationship in sport and in the rest of the markets. So this is sport law. Yes, it's sport law because it's different. Right. Uh, doping. When you are doping, what happens when you're doping? You're doping because you are doped. Come on, you have, to prove, you have to prove that. No, 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 I don't have to prove. You are into doping. On criminal law, the state has to prove that you are you're criminal. Yeah. But here you are criminal because I said that and then you have to prove the contrary. You have to prove that you are not guilty. So sports law. I started like that and then the rest is history. Now I'm getting older and I have my big cases. I'm not going to bother you with the legal issues or big cases, but let's say mm. just three or four cases. Uh, four years ago, uh, I had the case of uh, Messi when he, he, he insulted in some way the, uh, the referee in a match, the qualification for the World Cup Russia 2018. Yeah, yeah I remember. And he, he was sanctioned for four matches. I mean, four matches. Argentina was in the fifth place. So they were mm -hmm. not into the, the qualifying group, uh, the four first of, of uh, South America. 
And uh, I, I was lucky enough to win the four of them, the four matches. So Argentina won two matches and uh, draw one, and then they went through the, the qualification. This is this one, a big one. Now, right now, those days, yeah. I'm in the same uh, Argentina issue with the uh, accession of Argentina with the famous, uh, well, what happened in, in uh, Rio de Janeiro just uh, a couple of months yeah, ago. The, the, the COVID, um, the, the COVID the, matter, yeah. Yeah, the match between the Brazil and Argentina, two of the best teams in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, who is going to be sanctioned? Because the two of them left. Uh, and what kind of sanction? Now I'm representing Argentina and we are cross finger waiting for a decision. I think that is not going to be uh, in a couple of months, minimum a couple of months, I so will see. And uh, that's a few of the cases that have been involved. And there's a lot more, of course. Uh, I've been the lawyer of Zidane when he, he signed with Real Madrid. I've been the lawyer of uh, now um, PSG when they signed uh, Neymar, yeah. etc. Et this 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 year I, I made the transfer of uh, of Aguero to Barcelona and and Akimi from uh, Ashraf Akimi from uh, Inter Milan to PSG, PSG. Uh, etc. So so mm -hmm. I, I'm involved, but I'm involved mostly in litigation. My my core of of uh, of my, my firm is litigation mostly, you know, and then you do some transfer too because transfer are there and if ask you to make to help them to transfer, then you are there to transfer. Right. And now we have a case also with uh, Lautaro Martinez, the striker of Inter de Milano against mm -hmm. his former agent. And okay. litigation, most litigation. Uh, this is more or less, I can talk about this for hours, but I think that <laughs> I'm not only working on football, I'm working also in other sports like basketball, a lot of basketball. Yeah. Uh, um, and any other sport, gymnastic, right now I'm in a gymnastic case and so on. So mm. every sport, but you know, the king of sport in the world, but That's for football. the US is football. Definitely. So yeah, so as you have uh, you've <laughs> rightly told us, uh, there are so many high profile um, players you've represented uh, and, and all, but out of these cases, is there any case that probably um, is the most memorable that sticks out as the most memorable or perhaps most difficult. Is that could you? Is there something you could share with us about that? Well, memorable, memorable. There are a few of them. I'm going to give you two or three examples. The last one was really memorable, not for me, but for for the uh, war, for the for water football and mostly for the Peruvian uh, people. It was in uh, 1918, 2018, 2018 when I I was defending the captain and the striker of Peru, uh, Paolo Guerrero, into mm -hmm. an adopting case. He was sanctioned by not going to the World Cup. It was his only World Cup. Uh, mm -hmm. Peru was not qualified for 32 years. He was 33. And he has the last chance. And we managed to win uh, a stay of the decision of CAS into the Federal Tribunal of Switzerland. And then he was able to play and to oh. score one goal in his only participation in, in in a World Cup. This is something that you you like very much and you have a, a player like this. The one I just said with uh, also Messi, and there was a big one, a big case on 2004, the South American Bosman. You know, Bosman was a, a very famous case mm -hmm. in, in Europe, but in the world. Nine, because nine, he nine, five, yeah. And I did the same, but in South America in 2004. So there was also a case. But you know, at the end of the day, what case is most important? The one who comes to your heart, you know? And I had a, a, a Uruguayan player, small Uruguayan player. He was playing in the first division in Mexico, but low rate. And he came back to his country in third division in, in Uruguay. But he had a pending amount of money there in Mexico. Mm. He lost Mexico. He lost in FIFA. Then he lost in CAS. And then the thing came back to Mexico. He lost again in Mexico. And then they hired me. They hired mm -hmm. me and we went to CAS. Went to Cas. By the way, he made a mistake, or his lawyer made a mistake by going from Mexico to FIFA. He should have gone to Cas, but mm. court of sport. And I went to Cas, and there, the guy was really he said, "Mr. Crespo, this is my last chance. I'm, I, I don't have money. I need, I need that money. Yes or mm. yes, four hundred thousand U.S. dollars. That's my lot. house is, yeah. But for him, it was more than a lot. It was his life." His mm -hmm. best contract. He was earning $200 dollars 
in a in a way in the third division. So, oh yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. After four uh, losses in different uh, one, two, three, four losses in the fifth one, I, I came into the scheme and to the, the floor, and uh, we managed to win in Cas. And the guy, you know, cried when when I called him by phone two or three months after the hearing. He cried. Mm -hmm. And this is, those kind of cases are for me are much more important, maybe uh, not legally speaking, mm -hmm. not for my life, but for my heart, for my soul. And the guy, you know, when I was in, in Uruguay three years ago before the, the COVID, the pandemic, I was there with a family and uh, he just went to his uh, younger son. He said, this is Mr. Crespo, he saved our lives. So, you know, wow, those mm -hmm. days you, you you're like, you know, I mean, for me, for me, it was something. You feel like a real lawyer sometimes, even if you are just in, in transfers or in litigation or, or big cases, but sometimes you have those small cases uh, or one, uh, one uh, uh, equestrian uh, uh, an amateur from Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was into doping too, and we managed to win the case because it was a mistake in how the, the horses were, were fed in, in the competition. So, you know, those small things yeah. for me are very much important. Why? Because there's a face-to-face, -face, uh, something that is very much near with, with those guys and those ladies. It was a lady in this case, the last one. And mm. in the big cases, okay, this Messi, this PSG, this uh, Manchester United, but they are big, they are big by themselves. Exactly. But when, when you are with the small cases, you feel much more comfortable with them and you feel much more happy when you win those cases. I, I, I totally understand. I mean, I, I guess at the end of the day, it's about being able to make a difference in people's lives. I mean, if Messi or Zidane or any of these, these players lose a case, it doesn't really take much away from them. So I, I, I can relate to what you're saying in that, in that regard. Um, Speaking of small cases, um, I know you represented Joseph Lamte, um, the Ghanaian referee that was um, uh, banned for life because of uh, some irregularities in one of the World Cup qualifying games, I think back in 2017. Um, how often, aside like, you know, African players or like cases like Gio Lamte, how often do you uh, get cases that involve African Africans, whether they're players or referees or whatever? Well, we are lucky in a sense, uh, in the last four or five years, we had a lot of uh, African cases, a lot. Guinea-Bissau, mm -hmm. Ghana, uh, mostly mostly in, uh, in the case of uh, former president or president of the federations in which there, there is some alleged corruption, alleged ethical issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have managed to, to win some of them, to reduce some of them, and we're still expecting some decision now. But in the last four years, we might have been in six or seven of those cases. So we are, we are, we are there. I mean, uh, Black Africa in the North, the Maghreb, we are working a lot with Morocco, with also Egypt and, and, uh, and Tunisia. But in the Black Africa, from Senegal to the South, we, we have been involved in those cases. I don't know why. Maybe because there's a most, 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 and they, they tell, you know, this guy or this company, Read World Academy was nice because I'm not the one dealing with those cases, uh, one of my colleagues. But they, they might say, look, those guys need or, or, or have some, some knowledge of African uh, issues. And remember also a case of a player, um, a player who, who was, you know, remember the case of Togo, Togo, the bus in Togo, and yeah. it was shot. Yes, I, I was telling you that, remember surely the Togo case uh, in the African competition in the- A couple, couple of nations in 2010. Yeah, there was, there was a short shooting against the bus of the Togo yeah. players. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was just recalling now that one of the player, uh, had a problem. Uh, he couldn't really come back to the same level he had when he was a uh, when he was a, 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 a top player, a top player mm -hmm. from Togo, of course. And um, he was let alone, nothing, nothing. And one day, one lawyer from Africa called me. He said, 
Mr. Crespo, might we have some chance there? Because the African Federation Confederation CAF did not answer any of our claims, uh, any of our, of our emails. So I said, why not? We're going to provoke that. You know, we provoke and we send uh, a notice saying what happened was this. And the, the fault is of the CAF. You did not protect the player. And please answer this. Did not answer. So what we do, what we do, we did it. It's to send an appeal before CAS for lack of answering. You know, mm -hmm. they did not answer. It's a special name in, 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 uh, in the law, but let's say for the non-lawyers that when you send something and they don't reply to you, then you have the chance to go to CAS, the court of, of uh, okay. a for sport, because the CAF, the Confession of African Football, uh, has uh, made in the statute the possibility to go to CAS. We went to CAS and we settled at the end. I mean, the guy had nothing mm -hmm. and then settled. So he took some money, which is fine. I, I can't disclose the amount, mm -hmm. but he took some money. Any amount of money would have been fine because it was just forgotten by the rest of the world and mm -hmm. the rest of Afri uh, African competition and, and uh, African uh, bodies. So what can be done? I think that in Africa, there's a lot to do, but they are lacking sports lawyers. Uh, there are few of them already. There are few of them in Kenya. I know in South Africa. I know in Senegal. I know in in Morocco. Mm -hmm. but you have a lot of cases, a lot, mm -hmm. and some of them are just you know there in the shadow, like the case of the Togolese player, mm -hmm. the, the guy who taken nothing, and then he had something. At okay, least yeah. he was happy with that. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that there are a lot of cases that are just not even thought about. Mm -hmm. They are just there. Nobody wants to take them. And maybe because they, they think that there's nothing to be done, but there's always something to be done. You can win or lose, but you can be done. And now I'm defending also Simba, uh, the Simba FC club from uh, Tanzania, mm -hmm. in another case against an Egyptian, another African uh, club. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so there, there are, there are. And, and it seems to me that it could be much better for African football or for sport in Africa if you just forget that that issue. No, we can't do anything. No, you have to be provocative. You have to be adventurous. You have to yeah. try. You have to be don't, proactive don't as stick. well. Mm. Exactly. Don't stick where you are. Say, okay, nothing can be done. No, you can. You can do something. Of exactly. course, you have to go to a lawyer. You have to think about. It. And not every case might might be a winning case. But please, don't please just try. be there. Mm -hmm. without nothing else, not doing anything, but waiting and seeing. Don't wait and see, try always. Thank you very much for that piece of advice. Actually, I was going to come to making a case for uh, sports lawyers in Africa, but before then, um, so aside um, these kind of cases, like what are the most common cases that you get? Like, are they contractual breaches like you mentioned, or are there any other um, thing aside contractual breaches that people litigate on. I don't know. I'm not. I, I'm not a lawyer. Maybe this isn't uh, uh, a, a perfect question. But um, what kind of what kind of cases do you normally uh, work on, and how many of these are from Africans? Yeah, they they are mostly of the case of breach of contract. You know, mm -hmm. uh, breach of contract. Directly or indirectly, the case of, of Simba is an alleged breach of contract by a player, an African player, mm -hmm. and uh, the club who took the player, Simba, was sort of inducing, according to to, to FIFA. And then we went to CAS, and we are expecting now the the the, the award from CAS. So breach of contract directly or indirectly related to a player, to a club, etc. This is the most uh, I'm doing. Of course, doping too, and of course, uh, ethics and corruption, not only in Africa, but also in South America. Uh, we have a lot of that. At least we have a lot that has been disclosed, and that's why, why we are there. This is the more, and African cases, I can say a lot of uh, breach of contract, players, clubs, 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 transfers, not paid or unpaid, etc., and uh, ethics and, and, and corruption issues too. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the most we have uh, uh, in, in Africa, yeah. Okay, so what do you think accounts for most of these cases, like in the case of breach of contract? Is it that 
um, agents maybe mislead these players or do the players don't not understand exactly the terms they they, they go into or, do, or are the clubs just uh, not being nice to uh, African players because a lot of African players um, allege that um, they're not treated uh, right by clubs uh, because I know it's both ways. I know the clubs complain about the players, the players complain about the clubs. So what do you think um, uh, accounts for the, the, the high number in such cases for, for African players? Yeah, it's, it's not a, a black and white issue. I mean, it's a gray zone, a gray area always. Okay. Uh, the players can misbehave, the club can misbehave. Right now, for instance, we, we have a case in, in which an African player is involved with a club from uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, did it misbehave or not? You are not sure until you have the case, you have the evidences, you have the proof, and then, then you see if they are, you know, you, you, you are not sure 100% of who is the, the guilty party unless you, you have all the evidences. But mm -hmm. what can I say is that when I'm defending, uh, I remember a case with an African player from uh, Ivory Coast. Okay. It was, not, it was not a case against the player or against the club. My client was a Chinese club. And it mm. was last year during the, the COVID, the, exactly the, the very COVID, uh, there mm. were rules by FIFA saying that the player is, was not allowed to go to a national match with the national team uh, if yeah. his country or the country of his return has to do a quarantine for at least five days. In China, the quarantine was 14 days. Yeah. And the player, wanted to go to Ivory Coast to play against, I think, was Madagascar mm -hmm. in a qualification for, for the following stage. And um, I told him no. Then the Ivory Coast said another email, another fax, uh, and said, OK, he has to come because this is FIFA mandatory. I said, no, look, look at the regulation. Even the Ivory Coast Federation didn't know about the new regulation. They didn't know that he couldn't come. Mm -hmm. Because he had to come back, he has to stay 14 days. Mm -hmm. And the club had the right to decide not to uh, release the player to the Ivory Coast uh, national team. And this is something that I couldn't understand. Why are we sending emails and faxes one to the other when you should have just, after our first answer, look at the, at, at the FIFA and mm -hmm. the all. But a national federation. Mm. They did not know that, or at least they didn't want to know that because they said, okay, we're going to go to FIFA and we'll oblige you to uh, release the player. That's not the case. Not mm. the case. And then, you know, it, an African player could be an African player or an African player with a big A. When I was, <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes when, I was, when I was defending another Chinese club called Shanghai Xianhua against Drogba, Drogba was no usual African player. Drogba was the king, was the, the god there. Mm -hmm. So was the sport club, my club was in a lower position than him. But this is really, frankly speaking, there's a few cases. Normally the African player is in a bad position because if he's not already in Europe, he's an African player coming from, from Africa to let's say any country, uh, mostly in countries that are not too much uh, willing to, to be uh, legal with the with the contractual rights of a player, mm -hmm. it could be it could be difficult. Sometimes they retain the passport, or sometimes they said that it's too too uh, yeah it has taken too much uh, time for returning, or, or he was eating too much food and is be <laughs> becoming too much fat. Yeah. So you know these are the kind of cases we, we might have. Uh, mm. Everyone is guilty. No, some guiltiness in each party sometimes. Mm. But mostly what I, I, I'm surprised that the lack of, of knowledge of uh, some agents, some lawyers, of course, some players about when, why, and how, and where they are signing. In some countries, like, let's say, uh, Muslim countries, you can't, you can't have uh, some behavior. You need to know that. Mm -hmm. uh, in some other countries, you have another behavior. In China, for instance, you can't just manage to, to uh, deliver some... Uh, speeches in, in the TV because it's going to be bad received by, by the club. And you do yeah. that in Europe, it's fine, but not in, in China. Yeah. So you, 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 might, you might understand the country, you might understand the culture, you might understand the contract and the, the, 
the links that you have with the contracts. And this is something that I, I feel that is lacking. When I have something like that, normally I preach a bit with the player, with the agent and say, look, you have to do this, that, and that, because mm -hmm. I'm already uh, older enough to know where to go, how to go, and how to behave in that particular country. So maybe this is a lack of knowledge, maybe it's a lack of, of uh, intention to, to understand or to know. Right. Uh, the money is too easy to get, and I understand that. But sometimes the money is not that easy to get finally because you are misbehaving. So be always uh, aware of the big wolf there. The money is the big wolf, and the, sometimes the wolf is eating you. <laughs> yeah, so I guess um, a lot of education is needed as well um, on the part of the players, the agents, and I think even um, the clubs, they probably need to orient um, the players a bit more because especially foreign players uh, who come over so that they know the norms and the, the rules that exist uh, in the country in which they are. Anyway, well, Juan, thank you so much. Uh, I have one last question. You actually have partially answered it. But I'd like to um, ask again, like here in Africa, especially in Ghana, where I come from, there are a lot of people who aspire to become lawyers. Uh, there are people who, a lot of people studying law. And uh, I'd want to ask if you could make a case for them to specialize in, in sports law. You already started, but if you could just, you know, wrap it up for us so that those who are watching and would want to do law would choose sports law as their specialization. You, you are an example, you're not a lawyer, but you came to Khan, Murcia, you came to Murcia and you, you, you had your, your master MBA on uh, um, a lot of issues that are surrounding sport. Mm -hmm. So for a lawyer, for a lawyer who want to become a sport lawyer, he had to come to, or I had to go to a master in which he, he will understand the inside of sports law. Mm -hmm. uh, my aim in the future, is to try to have a master made in and off Africa. I'm okay. right now trying for next year to contact uh, universities, to contact the professors. I want to have a 90% professor from Africa, a 10% from Europe, uh, me and, and other of my colleagues in my law firm. And we are trying to do something. We, it's in our mind, the mind of, of a few of my colleagues and me, to try to do something in Africa by Africans, for Africans, with the help of some of, uh, let's say, more experienced lawyers. Because I think that you lack a very good master there. I, I know that uh, the CIS of uh, FIFA CIS is doing some diploma in Cairo and so on, but I think that you lack a very, very real master in sports law in which those young Africans are not that young because there are people with 40 years that change their mind and becoming sport lawyer because they love sport, mm -hmm. they are passionate mm -hmm. about sport and they want to become sport lawyer. Why not? You can change at any time. And uh, I think that young sport lawyer or not that young sport lawyer want, from Africa that want to, to become sport lawyer, they have to specialize. And specialize mean, of course, to have a diploma or to have uh, uh, a master. There are not degrees in the law schools, at least I don't know that degrees in Africa in which you become a sport lawyer by going to the, to the uh, law school. And then mm -hmm. you have to do that in a master. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, sure, I'm have, sure the lawyers and the law students themselves will be able to answer that. I don't, I don't have any idea <laughs> when it comes to that, but yeah. So yeah, Juan, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for, I, I know you just finished um, uh, a case at CAS, and so you must be tired and I really appreciate your time. So thank you very that's much. Why, that's, why, that's why I'm wearing my bow tie, you know, always. Your, your trademark bow tie. <laughs> yeah. This is another point, another point, Willem. If you want to be different, be different. So have something to make you a bit different if you want to be recognized in sports law. Me is my bow tie. Thank you very much. I, and I'll take that into consideration. I want to be different. I don't know how to make myself different, but I'll figure that out one way or the other. Thank you so much, Juan. Um, yeah, guys, so thank you for watching. Uh, I just finished with Juan de Dios Crespo. Uh, it was a very interesting conversation. It's law, a bit technical. I'm not too good at that, but um, the aspiring lawyers, the aspiring 
uh, professionals who want to take sport, specialize in sports law, I guess you guys uh, would understand it a bit more. But even for those of us who aren't too technical, I think we've learned quite a bit and I'm very grateful uh, for Juan's time for that. So yeah, guys, uh, let's, let's keep the conversation going. And um, if there's anything uh, that you want us to discuss, uh, we'll discuss, uh, let's uh, do what we can to make African sports better. Uh, let's change this. Let's change the status. Let's challenge the status quo by contributing in whatever small ways we can. Thank you, guys. Um, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, share, and uh, let's keep it going. And I'll see you guys again very soon. Thank you very much. Goodbye.